going to discuss five mo the five most important paralegal skills, how to assess your strengths, and then mapping out a skill development plan. The purpose is to be able to determine where your skill set is what, and how those skills match up with those important skills that paralegal make para, a paralegal successful. Then by assessing your strengths, you can then match up what your skill level is with those most um, important paralegal skills are. And then from there, map out a skill development. Once you determine where your strengths are, you'll also know where your weaknesses are. And if you're weak in one of the areas that is important for a paralegal to have, you can start mapping out a plan to help you to be able to develop those particular skills. So these are the four, five most important paralegal skills. Now this, this assessment came from just doing research on career websites and um, companies that provide, have a lot of background as far as paralegal and a paralegal career. All of them are equally weighted, but some may be more important than the other, but just to show the most important paralegal skills just based off of research, this particular graph just equally distributes the importance of them. But it could change and it could depend based off of what practice area you're working in, what type of organization you're working in, but they're all important. So you'll see here that problem solving is really important because as a paralegal you're dealing with cases and issues where you have to use your independent judgment a lot of times to be able to come up with a solution or how to map out a, a plan to be able to, you know, maybe you're doing legal research, which is another important skill for paralegals to have. The problem solving and the paralegal research and the legal research will go hand in hand because you have to come up with an effective method to be able to research and locate pertinent relevant information so you're not all over the place. Organization for a paralegal is extremely important because a lot of times you're dealing with a variety of different tasks. You may be researching, maybe interviewing clients, managing cases. So you have to be very organized so that you can handle everything that you are required to complete and do in your particular job and to get those things done in a timely fashion because of the deadlines and other court filing rules that require you to stay on top of changes and to be on top of stay on top of applicable rules. Technology is also important because of the different systems that are often used with managing different cases. How about you can have a case management system if you're required to keep tra track of your billable time. You have may have to use a billing system, a billing program. So or that's really important to be able to keep up with that aspect, but even also if you're working on cases where you have to create spreadsheets to come up with calculations, understanding Excel and different spreadsheets is extremely important. Word processing, the technological changes is important, and not just the technology itself, but the rules and the laws pertaining to them, because actually the ABA recently came out with a, a rule change that address technology and a lawyer's responsibility to stay on top of technological changes to provide better services to his, to his or her clients. So as a paralegal, this applies to you too because attorney relies on the paralegal a lot of time to be able to provide services to their client. So if the attorney is required to stay on top of technological changes, the paralegal is also because they're often delegated a lot of the work that attorneys do. And then also communication. That is extremely important. And not just being able to communicate effectively in writing and just being able to communicate to a client, because everybody, and I think a lot of legal professionals think that they are great communicators, but the fact that legal malpractice claims the number a lot of the top reason for those claims is a lack of communication. Communication is just not speaking and talking. Good communication means being able to listen and also to be able to make sure that information is relayed correctly and received correctly. And that's an area that is lacking overall in the legal industry just based off of legal malpractice claims. 
So that is extremely important, not just, again, written communication, being able to write case briefs, and being able to speak eloquently. It's also important to be able to listen. That's a part of communication. And also to be able to address any cultural differences and to be able to adjust communication styles to deal with that. So that's extremely important. And then down here at the bottom, you just see some additional add-ons here where you have professionalism. A lot of the research that was conducted as far as the paralegal skills that are essential discussed also professionalism and the paralegal being professional. And what that means in, in, an, in a profession where it's not regulated, it's important for a paralegal to be professional, meaning being able to handle issues, especially dealing with clients, appropriately and professionally. And that's something that sometimes is lacking. You'll see news reports are coming out with um, paralegals and um, saying certain things to clients. There was one case where a paralegal um, was very rude or had some issues with an elderly client. It was all over the news. And then you have issues with lawyers tweeting things about inappropriate comments about judges. So professionalism is extremely important. Ethics, important, dealing with client confidentiality and and privileged information and not disclosing that and understanding those rules pertaining to that. And then accountability is extremely important, again, because the paralegal profession is not regulated. So a paralegal has to build accountability into their career themselves in order to be successful and to be an asset for that particular firm that they're working for or that particular client. And so these are the five most important paralegal skills and then some additional skills that are necessary in order to be successful. Now, based off of that, you can assess your strengths based off of those skills. But also, you want to look at things as far as if you're in a particular practice area, where you are as far as your knowledge of that particular practice area. Whether you're a new paralegal or a seasoned paralegal, laws and rules are constantly changing. I mentioned before how the ABA changed the rule concerning um, a, a lawyer's responsibility to st stay on top of technological changes. The ABA is a voluntary association, and then paralegals aren't even required to be a member of any association, but the ABA, their guidelines and their models are followed in there by all states. All states, except for one, model their rules and tailor their rules after the ABA. So it's extremely important to know that. And even, you know, with paralegals, ABA certified programs, paralegal certificates, they go by ABA standards. So it's important to know those. And again, outside of those skills like communication and technology skills and research skills, it's important to stay up again on those changes that occur within particular practice areas because they're constantly changing and especially with technological changes rules are changing all of the time so it's important to assess your strengths as far as where is your knowledge base in your particular practice area on top of those other strengths you can do that in three different ways one you can take a career assessment Go, you can Google career assessments. One of the main uh, assessment is Myers-Briggs. And although Myers-Briggs is kind of like a personality test, what it does is it breaks down, it assesses your strengths, and then based off of that, you can determine what areas you most likely fit in. So then you can start seeing where your, your weaknesses are and start developing those if you need to. Then maybe some career coaching. If you click on these links, you have slides, you should see them right now where it says materials but then also you'll get an email afterwards with these with the slides click on the Myers-Briggs test it will take you there with more information about that click on the career coaching and it'll take you to um, the um, paralegal mentor this particular individual she does talks on paralegal I think it's called paralegal um, voice and she does different um, sessions on different aspects of the paralegal career but she also offers career coaching so that's another way to do to assess where you are in your career as far as your strength and skill level. And then also ask others. A lot of times other people can see what you don't. Even not just your strengths, but they can also see your weaknesses. 
So, you know, you find someone that you trust their opinion. A lot of times your manager, if you don't have annual reviews or periodic reviews to determine where you are as far as um, performing different functions in your job, then you can just ask maybe a manager and ask them, you know, I'm working on developing or however you want to word it and just kind of get some feedback as far as where they see your strengths are. And also you want to know where your weaknesses are because it's not only important to know your strengths, it's important to know your weaknesses because you may need to develop if they're applicable to you being successful in your job, you may need to develop those. And then also ask friends, you know, friends what they see your strengths and weaknesses. And then just do a self-analysis. You can analyze yourself and determine, you know, where your strengths are based in comparison to those skills that paralegals, that are important for paralegals to have. Once you do that, you're ready to map out a skill development plan. The skill development plan, you can create your own, but this is just an example of how to go about that. The, the, the goal is to be able to be the best that you can be. Here you'll see, you know, different um, indicators, you know, being you're either strong in that area, um, average, or it's, it's a weakness. And so based off of that, you can determine how much time you need to apply to developing that skill. If you're strong in that area, then it's really going to take like minimal to no time devoted to developing that. If it's something you're averaging, it's going to take some time, but you still, you don't want to be average. That's my opinion. I mean, being average is like, who just wants to be average? You want to stand out amongst your peers. So even if you're average in an area, you want to devote some time to putting into it. If it's one of those skills that are important for paralegals, so that you'll be strong in that particular area. So I want to devote some time to developing it. And then if it's an area where you're weak at, then you want to put some substantial time in. If that weakness is applicable to your job and you being successful as a paralegal, paralegal, you want to put some substantial time in in order to develop that. And developing that could be different things. If it's communication, verbal communication, and that's a lot of your job, then you can join Toastmasters. That's kind of like a structured way to be able to develop communication skills. Or if you have a fear of public speaking and maybe you're a member of a paralegal association and you want a leadership role, then a lot of, you know, you might do presentations and things of that nature. So Toastmasters would be great. It's structured great way to develop that. So different things are available to be able to develop those skills and you can just find those that are convenient to you and that are applicable to what skill you're trying to develop. Organization, you can, you know, find a book on it or or Google, you know, how to develop organization and then just work on it. They say it takes 21 days to form a new habit. So with organization, maybe just start your day off by writing down everything that you want to accomplish that day, then do it by week, then do it by month, and every day do the same thing for 21 days. Then you have a habit that helps you to be able to work on that aspect of a paralegal career as far as organization goes. So that's just some tips, but the again, the goal is to be able to develop those skills that you may need to, that you might be weak in, but also you want to know what your strengths are because if, let's say for instance, you're looking to change your career or your position, you want to be successful. The, a good rule of thumb is to work in an area where your strength can be applied. If you're weak in an area and you're looking to transition, it, it would be a disadvantage to try to work in an area where you have a weakness because while you're working in that job, you're going to have to develop that skill at the same time. Whereas if you're already strong there, you can hit the, you can hit the ground running. So, you know, these are just some tips, some way to be able to develop skills that are important for a paralegal to have. And again, there are some links that you have available within the presentation itself where you can click on. Or again, afterwards, you'll have access to the materials page. Click on there and then go again, the Paralegal Mentor. There's different, all kind of resources for paralegals. There's podcasts. I'm not sure how often they do the different, she does the different um, uh, um, sessions. 
but you can go click on that link and find more information about that specific to the paralegal career. If you have any questions, our new website is paralegalrainmakers.com, but you can still reach, um, go to the old website, list, which was prainmakers.com, and access the new website. There's more information, more training. Of course, if you want more information about training or anything like that in a specific area, then you have information there. Um, if you have any questions pertaining to this session, even in future, you want to go to the home page and click on the course schedule to find future paralegal power breaks. The March schedule will be coming out soon, so check those out. Those are free 15 minutes. Sessions are, you know, good to just focus in on a specific area and topic of the paralegal career. And give us a call, 866-255-7175. Customer service team will be up on Monday, so if you need to speak to somebody, you can reach them starting on Monday by phone and our Facebook page. Check us out for different information or Twitter. So hopefully this session was useful. If you have any questions, again, reach out on those different methods and have a great Wednesday, a great rest of your week, and a great paralegal career. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, feel free to type those in the chat box. If not, then um, hopefully I'll see you in the next Paralegal Power Break.